Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Hey, you guys. I'm Sabrina Bryan. You may recognize me from either Dancing with the Stars or The Cheetah Girls. We've been married for about a year and a half now, and it's been so great. We, you know, I mean, obviously you hit bumps in the road, a lot of things, a lot of conversations that we've had all throughout our dating, you know, the same conversations come up, but now that we're married, there's just a little bit more of like intensity to them. Mainly, you know, obviously like what our plan was and wanting, wanting to start a family and what that timeline is financial stuff you know there's just a lot of things that become a lot more serious when you are married and so it's been a really fun you know challenging journey that um, we've had to kind of just like mix our ideas together and luckily we had a lot of prep going into it we were together for a while before we were actually married so it's just been enjoying it there's a lot of change that we're bringing into our life right now you know, we're pregnant with our first baby, we're looking to buy a new house. And there's just a lot of new chapters that we're experiencing right now. And it's, it's all very, very fun and exciting. I mean, marriage is, is work. It's not just you don't just get married and all the problems go away. And you know, the arguments that you have, or the disagreements that you you feel towards different subjects, they don't just go away. You're definitely our focus was always to know that we and the, the vows we took were to choose each other every day, to make that that goal to, to be better every day, to work for our marriage, to know during the hard times it's about communicating. You know, listening is such a big thing of what's important to your spouse. And, you know, we go through, of course, we go through ups and downs and stuff, but it was more about committing ourselves to each other to not give up on that, you know, to know that the hard part is just as glorifying as the the awesome parts, you know, and the parts that you feel good, you got to put just as much power and just as much energy into those tough times. Of course, as every girl I feel in the world is a huge fan of the show, it was such an incredible experience being able to, one, reach out to uh, Haley Page. I had admired and just been obsessed with her style and her dresses for years at that point. I remember like one time on Instagram, I, I commented on and she commented back and I was like, oh, like just so excited. She was like, one day you'll get to wear one. And I was like, oh my God, she knows like, oh God. And then to be able to meet her and design with her a dress that for me was the most perfect dress of my entire life and my dreams were completely coming true and that all happened like on the show you know I got to sit down and watch her sketch out a dress for me that was just unbelievable and being in Kleinfeld and I mean it just it was such a magical day and my mom being able to be there with me and it was kind of a crazy weekend because it was like a huge snowstorm in New York so it was just like it was insane it was just but it was beautiful it made it magical snow makes everything magical so it just it was such a fun fun weekend I watched it when it premiered it was exciting to be with like like my, with Jordan and Mike, because it, it came out after our wedding, so I didn't have to be worried about him seeing anything with the dress or anything like that. Not that I picked one of the dresses that I wore, but, you know, just it was fun to, to, to kind of watch, and he got to see, not very many guys kind of get to see how you come to choosing the dress that you felt was the perfect dress for your wedding. And so that was really cool to be able to share with him. Well, I had been dancing at a studio for a long time, and I kind of just had this dream. Like, I really wanted to get into acting and TV shows and movies, and I, I felt at that point very comfortable on stage. I wasn't nervous to perform in front of people or anything like that, and my parents were really not interested in letting me do it there. It was such a crazy time. It, it looked like, you know, as everyone thinks, and there's a lot of parts that are very true that the industry is very scandalous and people go down a lot of wrong paths and there's a lot of bad people that take advantage of you and that is all very, very true. There is like that, just like in a, in a lot of other industries. So 
you know, and we live in Orange County, so LA is a good 45 minutes at times to an hour and a half away, depending on traffic. And it just was hard. I was already involved in so much already in my life. And uh, I had to really pull and, and beg and push to, to let them just get me an agent of any sort. And uh, one of their friend's daughters was in the industry. And she said, why don't you let her try out being an, an extra, which is, you know, the background, the people that are walking around in the background, sitting in a cafeteria, you know, or whatever um, during scenes. And they were like, that gets her on set. And it's not like too crazy. You can kind of see if she even likes it. Some people think they're going to like the industry. They get on set. They realize how boring it can be how slow paced it can be and then it goes fast and slow and you know there's just a lot of different entities of the the set life that's not for everyone and so they allowed me to do that and sure enough it, that did nothing but fuel my desire for it I was this is it this is exactly what I want to do I love it I love it they were like oh okay <laughs> so I think they thought I was like not gonna like it and then from there I just they once they saw my passion was real and that I was ready to put the work in, to go to the classes, to do the training, to do everything. They they got behind me full throttle and you know, I'm so blessed to have such crazy, incredible and and passionate, supportive parents that I did to allow me to do that and to to really just like head first dive into my dreams. And that that's pretty amazing for me. It was awesome. That's I took a lot of that time to watch you know, the makeup artists like swoop in and, and clean, the, clean up the actors or the lighting guys using all the tools that they use. Like they don't just like prop up a light. They, they measure it out. They have, you know, there's always like reasons to the madness that they, they have for each of their decisions. So it takes a lot of people to make those, those scenes happen. And it was awesome to be able to, to just observe. Yes. So my, my cousin was at a dance studio and during the summer, a lot of times I would stay with her and, you know, have weeks where we'd stay together. And um, she was really involved in dance at that time. And so I would go to her with her studio and watch her classes while she was there. And just watching through the window just didn't seem like enough for me. I needed more. So I definitely got myself into classes. I told my mom, I want to I wanna dance. I love it. It looks like it's so much fun. And my sister ahead of me did no dancing. She was all in sports, baseball and basketball and soft or volleyball she was and soccer was a big thing in our family and so I had already been playing soccer and my mom was just like okay we can try dancing like it was super new to her and so we kind of just dove in together and learned as we go dance is a huge part of the industry since you know singing in the rain days it, it's all it was always kind of a mix of everything all forms of entertainment and so I, I love that about the classic movies of how much music and dance has always influenced acting and the creative nature of the industry even during all of the cheetah girls days i've always been heavily involved in a high school level dance team. It's when I actually was on it when I was in high school. So I really loved the opportunity to kind of also be able to impact young girls, um, especially in their high school days, give them a huge purpose, give them a huge goal, get their competitive spirits going and to also like really highlight and um, glorify like the incredible amount of work they've done for so long. And I love it because this is a thing that normally you're at a studio, and yeah, you're a rock star at the studio and you're an incredible dancer, but no one at school really gets to see all of that talent. You know, when you're on a basketball team, they come and see you play basketball and um, dancers don't always have like a great outlet for that for their peers to see. And the program that we have gives them the ability to perform for their peers and show how talented they are. And, you know, all of that time that they were not able to go to birthday parties because they were competing at competitions and things like that. It's like, this is why. And, you know, it's, I, I really love it. I love the passion. I love the transition that I get to see with the girls when they come in at 13, 14 freshmen. They're super fresh-faced, super just starry-eyed at the whole idea of high school 
school and then they leave as these like incredible mature young women that are ready to like conquer the world. I, I love that very, very unique time part of um, every girl's life. So I get, I get to be in there mentoring them and being big supporters and fans of them. Yeah, I mean, of course, I've always, I always pop in and follow what's going on with Dancing with the Stars. I still love it. I think the show, being a, one of the celebrities that was a part of like the first couple seasons, season five, to what they're doing now, is just light years apart. It's it's developed to being so much bigger, and it gets bigger and bigger every year. I really love Jennifer Lopez's show. Obviously, love watching Derek. You know, being able to like. He's got such a great way of critiquing dancers and his eye for creativity is just incredible. But also the talent that they bring onto that show. Um, I've actually had two of my dancers on that show, the group out here called Quad Squad. And so they just bring incredible talent on that show. And so I definitely, I definitely love it. I don't always understand like how the very end people get to the end people because it's like groups versus solos and all that. It's all, it's all crazy, but it's just regardless. I just, I, I'm not even there really necessarily for the competition. It's more so just for the entertainment of the incredible creativity that comes out of these little bodies. The little ones kill me. I love it. It's just Amazing, amazing. Dancing with the Stars was an incredible experience. I love to looking back and knowing, you know, especially since I, you know, over the years have watched them grow so much. But being on Mark and Derek's first season on the show was incredible to watch Mark really not know how the show works and how, you know, the, I mean, his creativity and his technique were obviously there right from the start. That wasn't something that was different, but him opening the doors and his boundaries over the years has just been awesome to see how much he's grown and how much, how many chances he's taken. He just seems very fearless. And I think the first season that we were on, he wasn't as fearless. He was kind of just getting his feet wet and I'm not sure how, how far to push and, and what people would like. And then I, I love there was like a turning point a couple years after where he knew that his instincts were the best for him and he let any of his anxieties go and just went for it. And I think that's when some of his most magical pieces came out and were displayed. And I wish I had been able, there's so many of his routines that I was like, dang it, I wish I could have learned that one. That was amazing, you know. So it's definitely a great experience. You get to meet so many other celebrities from all different parts of the industry, from athletes to, you know, to big, like, politicians. And, you know, there's just so many people that come on that show. So instead of it just being around, like, my industry that I was in with just music and dance and the movies, like, I got to meet so many other people. It was just, it's a big family. And anytime you run into someone, whether they were on your season or not, because you both know what it's like to be on the show, you definitely, like, have a bond instantly. And we're all kind of part of that Dancing with the Stars family. I think, well, the one that I think of every time I think of the show, like instantly, is just the first dance, that cha-cha that we did. Um, like I said, the nerves that we both had, I mean, he didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. We were just like holding hands, walking out on that stage, like, here we go. You know, and I had done so many live performances with the Cheetah Girls, and I, it wasn't like performing on a big platform was new to me it wasn't that it was just like it's live tv you get one shot and that's it like i mean i was going to complete that routine one time versus on the on the cheetah girls you know if, if a little minor step happened first of all no one's judging you everyone's just there for the entertainment you're not getting paddles you know scores the stakes were high as far as like just the routine being as perfect as possible i always take all my performances very like like very seriously, but this just felt like it had so much on the line. You know, if you screwed up and one thing went wrong and tumbled the rest of the routine, that could be it. You could be out, you know, the first week, you know, and that's it. And all that time that you just spent, you know, being a part of the show is done so quickly. So it just was, you know, and then as you go on, it definitely 
your desire to stay on grows, your abilities, your, you know, everything kind of just keeps expanding. But that first dance you do is like, there's nothing like it, you know, uh, <laughs> of just, all right, this is it, go time. And you just go out there and do it. Do as best as you can. <laughs> I hope I don't let screw up so much and get slaughtered by Len. That's always the scary part. So um, at that point of the channel um, where they were at, they were doing the Disney Channel original movies, the DCOMs. They were doing a, a major one. Like They were releasing one every month. It was like the DCOM of the month. So there were a lot of opportunities to break into the, the Disney Channel world as an actress or actor at the time. And... I was really excited, and I had been on several auditions for different movies. I, I don't know if you knew the Johnny Tsunami. Like, I was – I went into that for a couple callbacks, and there's just a lot of – a lot of opportunities happening within the Disney Channel. It was just – it had blown up to be – I mean, it's always been big, but it was just – for, for me, at least, I was getting a lot of auditions, and so that was kind of the goal. What a lot of times happened is you would see someone on a DCOM movie – and then that opened the opportunity to be a part of one of their shows. Like you meet the casting director and then and the directors and the producers that like make it kind of all work together within the channel. And so it would it would create a lot of opportunity for you to be able to jump into that. And so that was always kind of the goal is, you know, you want to get on a movie because hopefully you'll get on a TV show at that point. And so when this opportunity for Cheetah Girls, it felt so different than anything else. I was able to, I was going to be singing and I was going to be, I was going to be able to display my dancing, you know, and, and just so much. It was like everything that I trained for was all in one opportunity. So it was just really exciting to get that script and those sides for the audition. Really like it. And I mean, I think they, it, they were seeing how much the movies were adding. We were the first movie or anything on the channel that had music involved in it and dancing. And so they'd never done that before. And I think once they saw that, like, the audience really, really responded to it very well. They were like, oh, what else can we do? And they bring in the Jonas Brothers. And they obviously had a hand. Hannah Montana was already, like, on the bill of, like, what they were going to be going into. And, you know, just seeing also that, like, so many of their actors that they had on board – have been trained in dancing and singing. And that was part of, you know, being a triple threat. It was part of what you knew to do it goes back to, again, like loving the old school Hollywood days. And like, that's just still very, like you see, you know, I mean, Kristen Bell is like, you wouldn't have known it from a lot of the characters that she's taken on and have done so well. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy cow, she's an incredible singer. You know, it's like, of course she is. She's like every other kid that was training back in the days. You learned everything. You didn't just learn how to act. You learned everything. So it's just really like, I, it, it's awesome. And so they had a lot of opportunity to do so much more than just, you know, what, you know, singing what or just the acting portion they've had not just funny kids they had kids that had a lot of talent to to display so the audition was um i got at the beginning of the show or sorry the first audition that i got i received all four scripts so they had they had sent me scripts to audition for galleria's part chanel's part and aqua's part and I can't remember if Aqua at the time was going to be a twin or not, if like her, her twin sister was going to be in the show or not. But um, they definitely sent scripts for all the characters. And you had to have all of them memorized and, and prepared for your audition. So when you went in, like I read Galleria's sides, I read Chanel's sides, I read Aqua's sides and, Dur and Dorinda's. And so they were wanting to see, they wanted to see what kind of mix of people they were going to be putting in and who was best suited for what role. And then the second time, I think I went in for Chanel and Dorinda. And then by my third callback, they had narrowed it down. They had, they had casted all the roles and Dorinda was like the last role that they hadn't casted yet. And they didn't know who they were looking for. They were looking for all ethnicities that we were in a room like going, wow, you can tell they do not have a specific like look 
that they're wanting to finish this out. They're wanting to see. And so they brought us in with, with Adrian and with Raven. And at that time, um, Solange Knowles was hired for Aqua. And so they, the three of them were in a room and they just kept bringing us in to like do our sides and, and work with them and see like what kind of chemistry and everything happened. And so that's when we were like, okay, they're getting down to the wire. They're really trying to finish up this girl group look. And that was how it went. And so it was several auditions, lots of time preparing. And um, you had to sing and dance at every single audition. And it was, it was a bit, it, when you go there and you know, they're asking for so much they you know, that Disney's putting a lot of lot on the line for this project and they're really wanting to get it right. So it was exciting. And I was beyond thrilled that I was the one that got to, to book and play Dorinda. Jenny is somebody who I had and looked up to and, you know, admired for years. I, you know, all of the music videos and things that he did with so many artists, but obviously might be a huge fan of Michael Jackson. And I was a big fan of Kenny. He, I loved, you know, Dirty Dancing was one of my favorite movies growing up. And you could just tell that he just takes something that could look this big and just expands it to like the horizon it's incredible so I would say that working the day that I got to work just not just me and Kenny but like it was my character's like big moment with the dance with me section in the second movie that was one of the days I cherish the most on set for sure of just being able to be in his zone and work every time we would rehearse it was like he put so much passion into what he's working on. And this part of it wasn't necessarily like a music video or a big performance. It was supposed to be very organic and very um, romantic and sweet and, you know, such a great like coming of age, you know, with her, not just horizoning, like her, her horizons opening with the style from hip hop to Latin dancing, but also like, really being interested in this boy who's showing her and then also just you know there's just so much of it her it like it was just watching him and it he really was somebody who was able to watch creatively open up that this is not just dialogue this these are not just steps this is how we're going to create this whole part of her storyline her core world how we're going to use dance to like exemplify all of the things she's going through right now and it was just him breaking that down and the day of filming was just like so magical I was, I'll just never forget that day that day was just incredible so proud of just being a part of it it just was like when I saw it at the premiere I was just like oh my god like wow just geez it turned out so amazing I think the second movie was was by far my favorite. Um, I mean, filming, each of them have such special moments. Like the Toronto one was the first time. I had just turned 18 when I when I booked The Cheetah Girls. So it was my first time being out working on my own as, as an adult and not a minor. So like that whole adventure of, you know, dealing with stuff on set, not having my parents right there, you know, just – just that kind of like, it was very like a big adventure for me because that was the first time that I had like, I had just gotten into college. So I had moved out in my dorm and then I had to leave college to go film. And um, so that was like a big, like memorable time of my life of just a lot of new beginnings, a lot of new independence that I had not had before. And then the second movie, I fell in love with Barcelona. I, I, I couldn't move there. I love Barcelona so much. Jordan and I, when we decided what we wanted to do for our honeymoon, I was like, I want to do a Mediterranean cruise and I want to do it out of Barcelona. So we got to spend a couple days there. I fell in love with the city, but I think as far as my storyline too, that was my favorite part of the movie for me was just all of those changes and that like, just, it just felt so great to, to show a girl who has a lot of preservations of letting people in um, kind of go through her first real big crush and her first kiss and her her first ever, you know four so many firsts and stuff that was like awesome and then definitely it was weird to see 
that ability of what I end up doing on Dancing with the Stars years after, which is like that being like a hip hop, you know, diff, different style dancing and then implementing like Latin in a ballroom type world into my life was like, it's weird how I ended up doing Dancing with the Stars after that. So I love the second movie. The third movie was awesome. I India was absolutely stunning and it was so great. I think I just really gravitated to everything around the second movie. I, I fell in love with Barcelona. That made everything about Barcelona was amazing. So it was, it was pretty awesome. very catchy and good songs like I I'm proud of the the work that we did and the music that we made it's you know it, it's awesome like people are like oh man do you like girl, uh, girl power I'm like yes and like do you like cheetah sisters yes I I love anytime it comes on like I just think that the the, the messages the the beats like the the tracks they're awesome they're like there's nothing that I'm like ever embarrassed about with the cheetah girls May, maybe a couple of the outfits here and there I wouldn't wear again um, but other than that um it, it's been pretty awesome Strut was my favorite to perform on that second tour, for sure. But I did love Step Up. I, I love Step Up in the movie. I love what Kenny created and mixing our that, that awesome transition from, you know, our working on the routine and making it happen into going into the live performance of it was a really cool transition. I loved the, like, production of all of that. But... I would say Strut was just one of my favorite. I mean, I just let go every time we, we performed that on stage. That one was definitely uh, my favorite. I think it's always good, you know, the idea of like perfecting your craft. Never stop learning. Always try to, you know, continue to be better all of the time. And and I help I say that because I think it fuels your fire. You have to my parents always said, you know, there's always gonna be if you sit and relax, there's always gonna be somebody who wants it more and that's the person who will book the job. And so you know you've gotta really there's a ton of people that have that same dream if you're wanting to be in the industry and you've gotta be the person that's willing to go out there and fight for it harder but also knowing that taking taking the no's as well as the yeses the same i'm not just being excited about what you've accomplished in the 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 callbacks and the bookings that you make, but being proud of, you know, what you did, even if it wasn't what they were looking for, that knowing that you did it the best that you could, and that's how you portrayed the character and being proud of what you did. And if anything, not letting it discourage you, but, but learn from it, you know, maybe there was something you could have done to either prepare more or to, to change while you go in there and to tackle certain obstacles or certain character situations it's always a learning experience and there is so I am still learning anytime I go out on any auditions I come back and really evaluate what I did it's a fun industry it's a tough industry but it's not impossible and anyone anyone who wants it bad enough and works hard enough can really reach their goals in this industry thank you for watching the Sarah Scoop show head to sarahscoop.com for more